Well, the testing is complete. Uh, I'm not going to graph this in Excel this time because I made a bunch of changes partway through the test that uh, makes the graph not all that helpful, but uh, in this case I didn't record battery voltage because I had no batteries. Uh, I plugged the uh, power supplies into the wall. Um, I found out that with all the inefficiencies involved, this UPS is 80% efficient or so. The power supplies are probably only 70% efficient. Um, put that all together and uh, running my uh, it ended up being about a 1300 watt load this time. I wasn't able to get the full 1500 watts out of it, unfortunately. Uh, but running that load was too much for one 20 amp breaker in my house. It popped the breaker, so I had to plug one bank of power supplies into one circuit, another bank into an extension cord going to another portion of the house. Uh, but uh, anyway, I got that up and running. Um, so this thing was really eating the power. A 20 amp breaker in my house couldn't support it. So anyway, I ran, let this thing run for, uh, for more than two hours this time, <clears throat> continuous, with the, uh, the load running on it the entire time. And uh, the uh, thermal couple that I taped to the side over here um, turned out to not be very accurate. <clears throat> so I also used an IR measurement just like before. I think there's too much airflow over it. But uh, basically, um, the modifications that I did worked uh, very, very well. Um, that's the short story. Um, I'll just quick go through my uh, my test data here because it's right out in front of me. Uh, basically, I just let it run um, like it is. I elevated the the unit off the table a little bit, put something underneath it just to uh, to allow some airflow and some heat sinking to the bottom case now. And the temperature rose uh, a lot slower than it did before. Um, I have a, an aluminum, a piece of extruded aluminum um, that I put on the bottom, uh, bottom of it. It's just a little C-channel piece of aluminum that I used to prop it up. And uh, I put that flat against the base, the underside of the unit, the base of it, thinking that uh, that would be a, a makeshift heat sink. And uh, indeed it was, because as soon as I put that on here, the temperature stopped rising and pretty well stabilized it just under 70 Celsius. I removed that bar and then started rising again, but stabilized at about 75 Celsius. <clears throat> I then covered the top vent to make sure the temperature would still rise like it did before, and it didn't rise as quickly as I thought. I uncovered it, it cooled off again. So, I um, guess without going into any more boring details, basically the modifications that I made, heat sinking it to the bottom, I think, helped uh, significantly. And then putting airflow over the top also helped quite a bit. Between the two, I can pretty confidently say now that uh, this UPS will have no problem running 1500 watts continuously. The transformer won't overheat, the transistors won't overheat, the printed circuit board won't overheat. Um, these wires won't overheat as long as I have a fan on them. These are inadequate, so I'll have to do something uh, eventually to uh, make this unit uh, more, more serviceable in whatever whatever application I choose to use it in. <clears throat> um, I'm not actually going to completely finish this in this video because uh, I have another idea of what I'm going to do with this thing, which I'm not going to go into now. I'll uh, maybe make a video of it at some point. But uh, I have a little project that I may or may not get to that I plan on using this inverter for eventually. So that may or may not be upcoming. But uh, Kind of my idea for the fan, uh, that fan that I have I can put on here pretty easily, but uh, in terms of powering it, since that's an AC fan, I think I'll just take this fan that's in the back, and it has a couple of leads that power this fan. It runs over here to a, a connector that I have the fan unplugged. But uh, I'm just going to take these leads, run them into a relay, and uh, power the relay directly off of the output outlet. That way the fan will turn on whatever the unit's on and uh, the fan will shut off <clears throat> if I turn the unit off in the front and just let it charge the batteries if I choose to do it that way. So I think that'll be pretty versatile for me. But uh, in any case, I, uh, I think I'm going to stop here now. Just put the top back on this, set it aside, and uh, when I get to the uh, second half of this project, <clears throat> then I'll pull it out again. So that's that for now. My uh, 
project of converting a smart UPS 1500 into a 1500 watt sine wave inverter is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, complete for now. So, thanks for watching. One more note before I go. Um, I just want to say that uh, I used a smart UPS 1500 rack mount. These uh, exact same principles that I just did will apply to basically any smart UPS, whether it's a tower version or a rack mount version. Um, they have the same sort of system, the same transistors, the same type of transformer, the same control circuitry. Um, it's just some form factor differences. And uh, the smart UPS 1000s, those get thrown away all the time. Businesses get rid of them. You can probably buy them on eBay or your favorite auction site for 10 bucks a piece. Um, they'll probably say they're broken, but in almost every case, they just need new batteries. <clears throat> and I bet you can convert those into a 1000 watt sine wave inverter uh, for very minimal cost. So, these principles can apply to, uh, to many different things, but uh, um, basically this is a very cheap and effective way to get a sine wave inverter. If you want a thousand watt sine wave inverter, you can actually have one for 50 bucks. Just takes a little bit of work and a little bit of know-how and you have a pretty good unit for just, just a little bit of money. So, I just wanted to mention that uh, these principles can apply to uh, to uh, model numbers that are not just this uh, particular one here. Anyway, thanks for watching.